oh, 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 won't you let me know, oh, 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 where to go, where to go. I've been hanging inside these walls now for days. Beautiful area of, of Rebecca Steel. Short Street, we built it with my partner Matthew Satchwell in the buildings over here, um, opposite the, the beautiful Royal Hotel. So this was an empty field. Um, in fact, my horse used to graze here. And uh, <clears throat> the whole thing was to, to build something that ties in with sort of history of Rebecca Steel and sort of join in with the hotel. <laughs> Let's see what they've got on there. This here. looks interesting. Off to you. Thank you, what a gentleman. Oh, always. Yeah. So, Anton, tell me what you do here. Yeah, so what we have here is a collection of Swatland wines, uh -huh. um, concentrating on the boutique wines and not sort of the supermarket orientated mm. wines, uh, which is what we are really known for. Um, so that's a destination place then, because it's somewhere that you can come for something really special, because nobody has what you have. <laughs> Yes, we're here in Ribica still this morning and you have it, you have the saxophone. How yeah, long have you been yeah. here? <laughs> I've been here for five years. It's been fantastic. I love this place. Uh, brought my saxophone. It's actually older than I am, Ooh. as you can see. But uh, And love to play a little bit for, for the people. And, you know, it's, it's just fun. Okay, so let's share in that fun. Play us a tune, my friend. I will indeed. Thanks. Okay, let's hear yeah, it. Okay. something a little bit about what you do here. The Olive Boutique started as an olive pressing facility for the village. It's been going now for 20 years and since then we've expanded into our range of gourmet olive products and our production of extra virgin olive oil and award-winning olive oil and we do tastings in a tasting bar but our core business is olive pressing and our core business is a service to our local community. So we're at Hetflok Castile, one of the lovely venues that we have here in Ribi Castile. So we're here with Ansi. Ansi, tell us about your place. Um, I start off in my kitchen at home. Mm -hmm. Humble beginnings. Yes, yes, yes. Hey. And at the stage, you know, and also when I started off, uh, Ribi Castile wasn't discovered yet. It wasn't still quiet, and you know, as most of the platter land in South Sleeping Africa. towns. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, and my husband and son said, no, you must sell your goods. And I said, well, where? How do I start, you know? And then the Olive Festival, it started in 2000. And actually, 
That put Rubeka Steel and the Valley on the map. Let's go and see the shop and see what you've got on offer. The good thing also about all your shop is with all your new development of products that you are always on standby to answer people's Absolutely. questions about what you have. The personal yeah. touch. Today we are here, as you can see, in Kloofenberg Wine Estate. What we are wanting to do here is to visit the estate for its speciality. We've got some good genes here on the farm. Um, you know, granddad was a Springbok rugby player. And then of course that has been passed on to Peter Steff. Peter Steff, so tell me, what do you do on this property? Yeah, so we've got a wonderful family farm here and we try and uh, build a family business. And of course we, we make wine, uh, red and white and my mother has a variety of olive products and uh, then we have table grapes on the farm as well. Okay, Peter, so you can tell me where the name Kloofenberg comes from? Yes, well, Kloofenberg it means place in the ravine, so it's the Kloof. And that's when you come here over from, from Malmesbury on the R46, you're passing and getting into the Kloof. So it's Kloofenberg, that's where the name stands. So we're here in the fields in Ribica still, I have Eric Fenter with me. So he's just going to give us a quick idea how they actually plant wheat. So Eric, take it away. Yes, Alistair, we're on the farm of uh, Jacobus Tritter, uh, De La Gif. I think that means uh, it's a gift. Yeah. And um, compared to the old days, where there was about uh, five tractors and implements on the fields, there's only one. The wheat is actually planted into the hard soil yes so the whole operation has everything in it it's got the, the the cultivation it's got the fertilization the seed and the covering up so we're in the kitchen of Elsie and Maritza so we are going to do bread today Maritza so the bread that you make is it um, farm style bread or what what styles of bread do you do um, we mostly do farm style bread and sourdough bread. I'm going to explain the normal farm style bread. Um, it's just your normal flour and then you take your sugar, let's say three teaspoons of sugar and a little bit of salt and you add it. And then you take your yeast that you struggle to get everywhere now because everyone's <laughs> making pineapple beer. You just add this to, to your flour and your whole mix and then you start to knead. After it raised or after you put it in the bread pan it needs to raise like this and then only you can and put it in the oven. Today we're visiting with Dani Malan on the property Alles Verloren. Alles Verloren is one of the oldest farms in South Africa. It dated back to the late 1600s. Wow. Uh, in 1696 the house was burned down. Alles Verloren was named just after that. Mm. Uh, so Alice Lauren all is lost. Okay, that, that's the name. Yes. My forefathers came from Wellington in 1872, mm. bought a farm, uh, and I'm generation number five now on the farm. Wow. And it's also understood that you are a fifth generation and born in the same house where the uh, former Prime Minister, D.F. Malan, was born. Yes, uh, our, our little town of Ruby Grace is very famous for one thing and one thing only, yeah. that uh, both Dr. Malan and General Smuts were born and bred and raised and went to school in this town. Mm. So, yes, I am uh, born in the same house as wow. Dr. Malan. Wow. If you look at the view in, in the morning, then uh, uh, the name doesn't actually recollect anything that's mm -hmm. on the run. It's, it's absolutely a privilege. And now on to Erlandsburg, a nature reserve set at the foothills of the mountains between Ribe Castile and Wellington. The vegetation we find here is called uh, Swatland Renosterfeld. It's called Renosterfeld because it's very grey, like the skin of a uh, rhino. So yeah, um, it actually changes colour during different times of the year. Um, in spring it's more green but you, know, you get towards the end of the summer and it actually gets very dark especially with uh, low light and that's where the name Swatland comes from as well so the Renostobos looks very very dark there's actually an incredible amount of species of plants inside there um, on this nature reserve we've found over 840 species of flowering wow. plants mm. um, of which 
Six are endemic only to this nature reserve, so nowhere else in the world. And there's over 100 rare and endangered ones as well. They were in the felt looking at flowers with the botanist from Cape Nature and the owner's dog came out of the felt with a tortoise. And the Cape Nature guy said, whoa, he, he couldn't believe this because that was the geometric tortoise. At that stage, they had, it had just been rediscovered. So they had actually thought it had gone extinct. Yeah, so that was then the beginning of the nature reserve. Most of those animals there are still in the process okay. of going to quacha, but the stallions have yeah. been selected. They are full, okay. what we call rau quacha. Through captive breeding, we've managed to breed the stripes off, get the brownness back, and they look exactly the same as the quacha that was shot out in the early 1600s. If you look at zebras in Africa, as it moved from north to south, the stripes get less. And the quacha was way down in the south and it had the least stripe of all the zebras. So for many years, they actually thought it was a separate species, but it's actually a subspecies. So in the 80s, when they discovered DNA, they got some material of an old quacha skin and sent it to America for testing. And uh, they compared it to zebra DNA and they said it's actually exactly the same species. It's a slight variation, which is your subspecies, which was most probably the coloring. Today I'm standing in front of the Wellington Blockhouse. These uh, blockhouses were built by the British to protect the railway uh, tracks running from Cape Town inland. Uh, preventing the uh, Boers from blowing up the lines. It is in a bit of a bad state and that is why I need your help to fix it. Wellington now guys and named after the grand old Duke of Wellington. Wellington like the Wellington boots? Most certainly is, oh, yes. Well, Wellington met up with Goodyear and together they came up with the famous Wellington boots that everybody wears. And I think they were used in the trenches in the Great War, so they huh? didn't get their feet wet. Let's go check out Wellington, guys. Well, here we have on our left-hand side the home of Andrew Getty Bain, where uh, Thomas Bain, his son was born, who wow. was responsible for multiple and breathtaking passes built throughout South Africa. Well. Wow. Beautiful. But they probably spent very little time here because they were always on the road, let's be honest. <laughs> so from Bain's house, let's make our way to Bain's Clough Pass. So behind us here lies the beautiful and fertile Berg River Valley. In 1699, 15 farms were allocated here to French Huguenots. And these guys were very industrious and they set about building wagons. So amongst locals, this area was known as the Valley of the Wagon Makers, Baldu Sharon. And as time went on and the community grew down below in the valley here, this whole area became very, very populated and they needed to move north. So on the 14th of September, 1854, this pass where we are now was actually completed by a gentleman by the name of Andrew Geddes Bain. So we're a little bit further down in the pass beautiful views as well the beautiful peaks over there lovely sandstone mountains we have the rock pools down below in the river Bainskloof allows you to have that feeling of nature i recommend coming to this pass and driving it slowly enjoying everything that the easier thank you for joining us in the ribic valley please like subscribe and share our videos with your friends and don't forget to click the notification bell. Ooh.